There we go. That should have started. Um, so yeah, so welcome everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking about the author's experience of publishing an open access book and particularly whether that experience is affected by being um, subject to any kind of policy mandate. Um, as I said, my name's Lucy Barnes and I'm one of the coordinators of the Open Access Books Network. We're putting this session on uh, as part of the Palomira project, so I'm going to share a couple of slides in a moment just to explain uh, briefly what the Palomira project is um, and what the OABN is, and uh, and then we'll we'll crack on with the main event and uh, and hear from our speakers. So I'm just going to share some slides. And hopefully you can all see those. Um, so what's Palomira? This event is part of the Palomira series and Palomira is an EU funded project that tries has been trying to understand how um, why so few open access policies actually currently include books it tends to focus more on journals. Why is that? And can we provide um, actionable recommendations to change this? Um, you can see here uh, some facts about who's part of the project. Um, it's been running from January of last year and it finishes in December of this year. So it's coming to its conclusion. Um, unfortunately, there's not time to tell you um, about all of the work that Palomir has been doing. There's an awful lot there that you could um, find out more about. And if you're interested in doing that, then I encourage you to sign up for the Palomira conference, which takes place at the end of this month, the 28th of October. There's a few places left to join um, in person in Slovenia, if you'd like to. Um, I think the, the signups for that close on the 11th of October, but you can also join online um, and the signups for that, I think, go on later. And I encourage you to do that if you're interested in this issue. The Palomira project is going to share a wealth of information, the work it's been doing and um, what it's found out about the current situation and also how the Palomira project's work is going to continue beyond the life, lifetime of the project. So do sign up for that if you're if you're interested. And then what's the Open Access Books Network? So as I've said, I'm one of the coordinators of the IBN. It's an open free network for anyone who's interested in open access books in any capacity. Um, I coordinate it with two colleagues, Andrea Davison and Silke Davison at Spark Europe and OAPEN DOAB. And we develop uh, resources and host events, blog posts, uh, discussion boards to share knowledge um, and best practices related to open access book publishing. And as I said, it's for anyone, if you're an author, if you're a publisher, if you're a librarian, um, we try to, to support all those different communities on the platform. And you can join us in different ways. So you can join us via Humanities Commons, via our website, we've got a Twitter, mailing list, we put on events like this. Um, so do have a look if you're interested. You can stay in touch with the OABN um, via our website or our mailing list. And similarly, Palomir has got a website and a mailing list as well. So join either, join both, um, you'd be very welcome. Um, and now that I've got through the kind of preliminaries, so why are we actually all here today? So we're here to, to hear from authors about their experiences of publishing an open access book. Um, and in some cases, because some of the authors were subject to a, a policy mandate, usually from a funder, I think, what was that experience like? What worked, what went well, maybe what could have been done differently? Um, and perhaps how do the authors feel about open access book publishing now and maybe about publishing in general, have their views changed? Um, so we're gonna dig into that with presentations and also with questions and discussion afterwards. Um, and please feel free, as I've said, to drop questions in the chat if you'd like to. We're going to hear from Yenika van der Waal from Leiden University, whose book uh, is a featured typology of Bantu Agreement, and that's published by Oxford University Press. Artis Loggins at Laval University, who has published Normative Reasons Between Reasoning and Explanation, and that's published by Cambridge University Press. Evie Agostini of the University of Vienna published Vignette Research, Research Methods, and that was um, published by Bloomsbury. And Milud Belkonian from the University of Zurich, uh, Rational Understanding from Explanation to Knowledge, and that was published by Routledge. And obviously, because they're open access books, you can go away and read them afterwards if you'd like to. And there's such a, a, an array of different topics there. I feel like there's going to be something for everyone uh, in those books. Um, so I'm going to stop talking now and stop sharing my slides. Uh, and I will hand over um, to Yannicka to begin. Yeah, thank you very much. Um... The, the, the short story is um, I had a book, um, I applied for money uh, from the Dutch Research Council um, and now it's open access. Um, and the slightly longer version is that I was uh, involved as a postdoc in uh, a project in uh, Cambridge and started uh, the research uh, for that book there. 
Um, meanwhile, um, uh, two or three books had already appeared in uh, a sort of new series uh, at uh, OUP um, from my uh, colleagues at Cambridge. And therefore, um, I wanted to and, and sort of was expected to also publish uh, in that series um, uh, as it fits uh, thematically uh, as well. Um, I continued working on that book during uh, the project that I started in uh, Leiden. And that project was funded by uh, the Dutch Research Council. And uh, at the time, open access uh, was not uh, in, the, uh, in the budget for that, um, or it didn't need to be in the budget for that project uh, here in Leiden. Um, however, uh, the Dutch Research Council moved to a requirement for uh, publicly funded uh, projects to publish open access. And uh, therefore, once I had finished the book, um, I was stuck with, I want to uh, publish with OUP, and that will not be open access, which is a requirement. Uh, luckily for me, uh, the Dutch Research Council um, organized some money uh, to publish books uh, uh, open access. And I applied for that. Um, there was uh, a maximum of uh, 10,000 euros. Um, I asked uh, OUP how I could uh, publish this uh, open access. Um, and uh, they just let me know there's a book processing uh, charge and uh, that was, I just looked it up, um, uh, 9,500 pounds, which um, uh, came down to 11,300 euros, I think, uh, which meant that um, I was, it, I, I got that grant, so that was 10,000, and then there was uh, 1,300 that came out of um, the, uh, the project's uh, money. So that was uh, all, all good. Um, those charges were paid. Um, that was a bit of a hassle because the money had to first come to the university and be hosted in a separate uh, pot and then be paid to OUP. Um, but, uh, you know, there's other people worrying about that. So uh, for me, that was uh, sort of smooth uh, as, as long as I uh, pinched the right person to, uh, to actually do something. Um, and I think that really was was that. Um, I do want to add one more thing is that uh, another book uh, is uh, coming out as the result of this same project, uh, but we decided to publish that with Language Science Press, which is um, an open access publisher sort of community, organized community uh, uh, funded uh, in a way um, for linguistics. And uh, that requires a bit more, um, well, I, I was about to say that requires a bit more effort from the editor or author is not really true because um, correcting the proofs from uh, Indian copy editors that happened to be working at OUP at the time that my uh, book was being copy edited also required some effort and time. Um, the only downside of language science press is that you have to work with uh, LaTeX, which I didn't and am now getting into. Um, yeah, so that's that's my story. Thanks, Yannicka. Um, that's great. Very interesting. Um, and our next speaker is going to be... Um, oh, hang on. Sorry, there is one question here from Elio. He's asked, why not un uh, Leiden University Press? Precisely because the uh, the other books in the uh, in the series uh, were already at LUP. Uh, so that's why that book, as being part of that series, needed to be at LUP. And then for the second book, um i suppose visibility um is uh, uh, the reason for uh, choosing language science press um and uh known quality not to say that leiden doesn't have uh, uh, doesn't organize uh, quality but the sort of network um and uh, visibility 
um, was the reason there. Yeah. So kind of a community of readers that's already aware of that press. Okay, thank you. Um, and then Artur's Loggins, would you like to go next? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to share my experience on publishing an open access book. Um, I don't have slides, but I can I can share the the page of my book from uh, from Cambridge University Press. So uh, just uh, uh, oh, I have to send a request to share. Sorry about that. I should have given. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> sharing rights. Um, I've not had a request, but I'll I'll dig into that artist if okay. you want to carry yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so Did my experience request, was. Uh, sorry, sorry, the request went to me, so you should be able to share now. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Oh yeah, I see. There so here, here's here's sorry. my book. Uh, so this is the yeah. So this is the web page. You can visit it at Cambridge University Press. Normative reasons. It's it's open for everyone. Uh, you can uh, dig into chapters by chapters or or have a PDF of the whole book. It's uh, quite nice. Um, so the layout is quite nice. you can you can download it uh, whatever you want. Uh, you can see some metrics which are not like all that there is, but but it gives you an idea of your audience and uh, so and um, that's my book. So um, Right. Uh, about my experience, um, it's uh, I I I would say it was overall positive, and I I'm uh, if I were to do it again, I would do it again. Uh, I, I think it's a good idea to publish it openly, but I uh, I still have also some. I I met some unexpected. Uh, uh, I would say not obstacles, but but th there were some unexpected. <clears throat> Events that that uh, made the experience a bit more uh, time consuming than what I expected. Um, so I can tell a bit about that. Um, uh, so first of all, how how the process went? I was at that time postdoc at uh, University of Geneva in Switzerland. So I was I was uh, on a on a Swiss National Science Foundation grant. Uh, and uh, there is this requirement from from SSF to to publish uh, our research output uh, openly. Uh, at that time, at, I as I remember, the requirement was still, I, I don't know what, what the requirement is, is right now, but at that time it was quite uh, flexible in the sense that it has to be publicly available. However you do it, it's uh, it can be uh, either on, on the database of the foundation or on your own database, but not, not like, commercial database on, on your own web page or, or somewhere. It has to be open access. So uh, I, I was in this in the middle of this project of writing a book. Um, and though I, I try to understand like how should I uh, what what am I supposed to do with respect to uh, this requirement for uh, for my book, like open access requirement for a book. Uh, and I asked uh, Swiss National Science Foundation and and as it happens as uh, at that time, they launched. I think that was the first or second year they they launched this new uh, project uh, funding for for open access uh, books. Uh, there was already like a, a way to finance your articles, but but the, the new thing was was for books, and uh, I I applied uh, for this funding, uh, and. Uh, I, I obtained it, and I'm super grateful uh, to Swiss National Science Foundation. I, I, I think that they're doing really great job, uh, giving uh, important amounts of money for for making uh, research public. Uh, but it also uh, was not as smooth as I, I expected. Uh, one thing that that complicated a bit uh, things were that there was a moment when I when when my book was when my manuscript. Book manuscript was accepted by Cambridge University Press, and uh, and I wanted to go on with this open access pub publishing, and and I still had to wait for some six or so, so months before I, I I get an answer from Swiss National Science Foundation, and in this in this uh, in between uh, time I I was unsure if if my if my book will be will will go to. As as open access or not, uh, should I like I, I couldn't 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 move on with 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 the project. So there was a bit of of uh, of 
not, not I would not say a stress, but there was a state where I was I, I didn't know what what will happen with this book. So the, the process was not completely straightforward. Uh, thing that was a bit more perhaps uh, uh, the thing that took more even more of my cognitive energy was was that uh, uh, th there was some some incompatibility in in like how like how exactly the payment will will proceed in between uh, Swiss National Science Foundation and Cambridge University Press. Uh, Cambridge gave me a quote. It was in in uh, in pounds, so it was it was uh, I had to uh, pay. Uh, Eleven thousand four hundred uh, British pounds for for making my book open access, but Swiss National Science Foundation gives money in in Swiss francs, and they are strict about that. They are not sending any any other currency to, to any anyone. So uh, I had to had to calculate uh, the, the how how much exactly I need to ask, and and then I had to include like uh, taxes, uh, like twenty percent taxes on on what it, I had to make some calculus, and then and then I had to hope that there will not be that much of fluctuation in between the, the moment when I submit my product and the moment I get the decision. At the end of the day, everything everything was fine. I was maybe too worried about about this, too much worried. Uh, but 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 there was this uh, moment of stress. I, I'm not I'm not an accountant. I'm not I'm not doing this kind of thing in my life. I, I'm a philosopher, <laughs> so I, I had I had to do a bit this. So this was a bit stressful. Uh, but but uh, uh, otherwise, uh, as I said, I, I'm super grateful for this experience, and I would do it again. I think it's a great way of sharing knowledge and sharing our research. Thank you. Thanks, Artis. Um, I'm just checking the chat to see if there's any questions come in. Um, and of course, you know, if you would like to drop questions in for, for after the speakers have all, all finished, then we're gonna have some discussions. So please do uh, drop in your questions at any time. Uh, but next, um, Evie, would you like to go next? Yeah, thank you, Lucy. Uh, so hello to everyone. My name is Efi Agostini and I'm joining from the University of Vienna and I've published open access without a policy mandate, which might be a good counterpoint to the experiences of the others we've, uh, I've already heard. And in my case, it was a publication in the field of qualitative research methods that I co-authored with two other colleagues, one from Austria and uh, the other one from South Africa. So uh, it was on vignette research. And we decided to publish the book with Bloomsbury Publishing, which has offices in London, New York, Sydney, Daily, uh, because the publishing house convinced us uh, because it has its own uh, methodological series. And an Italian colleague had already had very good experiences with this publishing house. And once we had contacted the publishing house and also success, successfully submitted our proposal, it quickly became clear that we should publish the, the book openly. So on the one hand, the publishing house uh, urged us to do so, to, it, to do it in the open access way. And on the other hand, we, we as authors also thought that it uh, would be a very good idea to increase the international readership. And um, as the main author of the book, I then approached our national funding agency, the Austrian uh, agency FWF, uh, because the FWF finances a great range of projects worth millions, but also funds open access publications up to a maximum of two, uh, 20,000 euro. And for the, uh, the, the fee uh, was up to uh, 10,000 euros for our book. And my South African colleague would have found it difficult uh, to raise her share to, to a lack, lack of funds in South Africa. So I submitted the application to the FWF. And uh, in total, we received 18,000 euros for open access and also for um, English language editing. So um, um, my, my experiences with the funding agency, they were very good. We received very good advice from the FWF and the two staff members who are responsible for open access uh, publications. So the application process was uh, straightforward and not very time consuming uh, because I only had to submit the entire finished manuscript with a few attachments such as confirmations from the publishing house 
and uh, some kind of cost, uh, cost breakdown. And then we had to wait for at least uh, two reviews from international peer reviewers. However, the FWF worked together with the publishing house and the publishing house organized the reviews for the FWF. And of course, I also learned a few things during the application process. For example, that our book could be linked to an already funded FWF project so that we were entitled to a faster procedure as we were subject to certain quality criteria because the book publications funding program provides for publications on the results of uh, FWF and the projects that have already undergone, uh, undergone the F FWF quality con control procedure and accelerated decision-making process. So in concrete terms, this means that we knew uh, within a few months whether our publication would be funded by the FWF, whereas others um, had to wait uh, many months if not more than for uh, more than a year, which also then delays the whole process. So uh, of course, the, the whole process was uh, still a, lit, uh, a little bit more time consuming. Um, uh, uh, um, then for example, an, uh, an, an open access process where I would pay the fee out of my own project, but uh, at the end, uh, there were only a few forms to fill in and uh, for, we had to wait for the decision. And so I, I would say I, I got a lot of money for relatively little effort. And in the meantime, I also won a large uh, research project funded by the FWF, uh, which will uh, now run for 36 months. And in this new project, there is also a policy mandate for me to try to make all the resulting publications open access. So for many of the journals, um, this is already done uh, or paid by the University of Vienna, but uh, for books uh, such as monographs or edited volumes or proceedings resulting from the project, I will again apply to the FWF uh, for open access funding. Uh, so the success rate at the time I applied was about 60%. So it's uh, definitely worth trying it, I would say. Great, thank you. Was there anything else you wanted to add, you? No, I'm fine, thank you. Perfect, okay, thank you. Um, and so our final speaker, um, Milud, would you like to go next? Yes, of course. So, um, yeah, thank you for inviting me to share my experience, which is, uh, as uh, I'm also a philosopher working at the time <laughs> with archers in Switzerland, will be uh, quite similar to, 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 to the experience you share, but, uh, although slightly better, I think, than his. <laughs> um, so, um, so basically, the, the, the book uh, I published uh, was written during two uh, successive postdoc uh, positions financed by the Swiss National uh, Science Foundation, uh, the SNF. And um, as Arthur already said, I mean, so the, the, the SNF is somehow quite flexible when it comes to, to requirements uh, with regard to open access publication. They've, this system, if I remember well, either you have to publish what they call green open access, which means basically that you have to, to wait an embargo period, uh, depending on, on, on whether it's a, a book, a, a journal, and then put it on a, on a public database, or you have to go for or you can go for gold, of what they call gold open access, which is basically, the, you know, the, you, you pay a fee and, 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 and your book is uh, directly av available after publication to, to everybody who is interested uh, by it. So in a way, I, I, I didn't do, uh, I didn't go for the gold uh, open access option because I was required to, as I had the option to, to go for, for the green option. Um, and, and so, after uh, uh, I finished writing the manuscript and I got a contract with the editor, um, I, I think I, I, I basically decided to go for the fund, funding scheme uh, offered by the SNS because because I heard about it. And uh, as a matter as a matter of fact, I think it's even Archers who told me about uh, about it at the time, uh, and I thought it was a good idea. Um, so my only reservation at the time was, you know, it's, it's already uh, a quite time consuming process to write a book. 
uh, write a revision of the book or revisions uh, if if you need to. So that that whole process was already quite time consuming, and I somehow wanted to finish with that. <laughs> so, um, but I realized that uh, when it comes to the funding scheme offered by the SNF, it was quite simple to apply uh, for it. So basically, what they what they were interested to you had uh, as as other uh, uh, other author, uh, had to do to basically put a, a finished version of the manuscript uh, uh, as attachment to to the application, some some basic data about the manuscript, and they were uh, they, they they are uh, they really care about the peer review process. So basically, uh, the publisher had to send the reports that were written on the book uh, because. The, the, Basic requirement is that if you if if the review peer review process uh, your manuscript has gone through meet the standard of the SNF, then basically you you it should be accepted. So that's as I understood it, the only standard that they apply when choosing whether they 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 found your uh, your your application or not. So that went uh, uh, quite fine. So at the time I applied the. the Average amount of time it took for uh, to reach a decision uh, was two months. Uh, if I if I if I remember well, it didn't take me more than two months to have an answer for for the SNF. Uh, I think the the processing fees with Bratledge was thirteen thousand uh, dollar, and the maximum amount you could ask for was uh, I think around in in euro it would be uh, sixteen thousand. Uh, the maximum amount you could ask, so that was easily covered by the by by by, by the the money I asked the SNF. So every everything at, at that level went really smoothly and quickly, I would say in my case. Um, and then, of course, it took it took a bit of time for the money to be transferred to Rutledge. But to be fair with the SNF, I, I had the impression that the fault uh, was more on the Rutledge side than the than the SNF side. In my case, where uh, you know. Uh, payment information got lost or something like that. And it took like much more time than it should have because of that. But I, I don't think it was it was really a problem uh, of optimization on the on the SNF side. Uh, I think it was really the, the editor in that case that didn't really do a great job. And then quite quickly after that, uh, the book the book got published and 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 well I, I'm pretty uh, don't know if I had something else to add. I'm pretty uh, uh, I was pretty happy with the experience overall, and I I, I would do it again uh, with the SNF uh, if I if I write another book. Maybe one thing I uh, I was thinking uh, before uh, before this presentation that could be optimized in the case of the Swiss institu institutional landscape would be the communication. I would say because I I basically never heard about this funding scheme uh, before Arthur's I think told me about it. And uh, I, I, yeah, I would recommend really the SNF to 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 make to publicize and, and to 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 make this funding scheme known to authors because I, I guess that probably a lot of people would be interested in 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 applying for this kind of scheme, given also uh, uh, how easy it is to get the money. Um, so yeah, if I could. Uh, give a indirect recommendation to the SNF through you would, would be that basically I mean make more publicity about this funding scheme and make it known a bit better um, um yeah I think I think that's that was my my experience <laughs> thanks Milou. that's great and yeah useful to know I think the extent to which these different programs are communicated to you as authors and also how well it's communicated what the actual process is is something that's that might be interesting to talk more about um, we do have a, a couple of points in the chat. People are curious about embargo periods, whether any of your books were subject to an embargo period and if they were, for what reason. Um, was anyone, any did anyone's OA version have an embargo? No? No? Okay. I, I don't think that in my case there is an embargo period, but I, I would really have to, to, to check in the contract, but I, I don't think so. Oh my, my guess would be because it sounds like all of these books were sort of kind of published via the publisher on payment of a fee so most likely they were probably all away at the time of publication um and then we have a question from um ivan many thanks to the presenters did your open access book have paper versions as well so was there a paperback or hardback version 
And how did the open access to the digital version influence the price and the number of physical books published? So do you know about the relationship between the digital OA version and the physical version? There we go. Yannick has got the physical version right there. Yeah, no, I, I do have a, a physical uh, copy. And um, I know that uh, um, somewhere 250 libraries uh, in the world have a physical copy of this uh, this book too. Um, I know that uh, fewer copies were printed uh, precisely because of the open access uh, and um, of course one thing that is different is that uh, as an author uh, once you um, once you pay the book processing charges and uh, everything's open access you you don't get any revenue uh, revenue for, for the, from the book. Um, any, what's the what's the term there, uh, Lucy? Um, um, royalties. 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 Thank you. That's the term I was looking for. Yeah. Um, so if if you were hoping to uh, get rich, then uh, um, then no. Um, <laughs> I was very happy that there is actually a, a a physical book because I know many people, uh, and I myself am such a person who love um, the actual paper and seeing where you are in the book. Yeah, I think um, that's often the case for, for authors and readers. Um, artists, I think yeah, you've got your book there. Yeah. I, mean, I have a hardback and paperback. Uh, I have discount codes. No, <laughs> no um, uh, yes, uh, just uh, I, I, I have to correct what I said uh, in the light of what Milud said. Uh, I, uh, I think I said something like I had to wait for six months. Actually, I checked my emails and uh, that was less than that. Uh, to, to, um, it, I think I submitted my product uh, towards the end of June, and and uh, release of funds were um, happened in 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 uh, in first October or something like that, or end of end of September maybe. Uh, so it was less less than six months. Um, uh, uh, my mistake. Uh, but uh, with respect to uh, to correlation between open access and physical books, no. I, I I would I would actually like to know myself like what what the correlation is. Uh, I, 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 I don't, I don't expect there to be. Um, uh, I, I don't, I don't expect that they published more uh, physical books, uh, given that they had uh, also a digital version. Uh, uh, but, but with respect to your royalties, uh, one, one funny thing that uh, happened is that uh, the open access uh, uh, fee. Uh, was counted by Cambridge as as a uh, as as within the sales of the of the book so i i got some some money out of that too. <laughs> that's a if, if someone is undecided whether to go to to, to open access that may be one reason <laughs> that could... that's really interesting so you got royalties based on the the well that, the that, that i i I, no one told me that, but that I, when I received my royalties, I said I was not expected. To, I was not expecting to receive that much, <laughs> and I I, went, I I I logged in my in my Cambridge space, whatever, and then I saw that were sales were very high, and and I tried to understand what 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 was the meaning of that, and then I saw oh okay they counted in this uh, open access fees uh, as as sales. It sounds like Yannicka, that maybe didn't happen with you. No, I was about to say this is something that we can learn now that uh, uh, when we're we can actually negotiate um, and not just accept whatever they uh, send us. Uh, I mean, I, I I did something, but uh, um, but I I had no idea you could actually ask the royalties based on on this open access too, or maybe that's I, just the difference between uh, Cambridge uh, and Oxford. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I never asked for it. It just happened. I was like happy to discover it, but but uh, my royalties were are like a, a percentage of of like of, of sales. It, it was not a fixed uh, fixed amount of money. So that that's that's how it was. Kind of. And Evie and Malud, how about you? What was your experience? Uh, my experience is uh, this um, nearly the same as Yannickes. So. Uh, uh, I also have, or also Arthur's experience because I also have um, uh, physical copies of my book, but they printed fewer copies with the open access versions. But I go, I, I get, uh, and my, also my co-authors, we get royalties for the paper versions of the book. 
but there's a relation between the amount of uh, the printed copies and and also um, yes, that's, it's influenced by open access. Yeah, thank you, um, Milu. So uh, unfortunately, I didn't get any money out of uh, the open access uh, transaction, but uh, they they printed uh, a paper copy as well, and they are available on sale. I cannot, I have no idea uh, if there is a correlation between the number of, of printed version they did and, and the fact that uh, the book was available open access. Uh, the royalties uh, for the author concern only what is not in open access in my case. So the hardback and paperback uh, version of the book. And uh, I think the question was also about the prices. Um, I don't think in my case in, it influences in any way uh, the prices, the selling prices of the paper and hardback copy of the book, the fact that they were open access. Um, and there's a, a comment about licenses. So apparently all of the books um, that you've published have uh, NCND licenses, so non-commercial and no derivative reuse, unless the reader applies um, to the copyright holder for that. So Elio suggests, is that more open reading than open access? And I guess to, to sort of ask a question on the back of that, why did you choose those license, that license and would you consider a different license in the future or were you happy with that choice? I don't know if anyone has thoughts or maybe the license was suggested by the publisher, I don't know. I can go first again. Yeah, uh, the license was uh, uh, suggested by the publisher. Um, I did have uh, reasons to uh, do that. There are lots of uh, linguistic examples uh, in, in the book um, and I do not want anyone to change those uh, and and say, look, this is uh, uh, what so and so said because that that just changes the data basically. Um, so that was one uh, uh, one thought there. Would, did anyone have have a license uh, set by the funder or the policymaker? Was that part of your conversations with them? I have a, there's already an answer about my experiences in the chat. So. The funding agency, uh, they um, they wanted a certain type of license. In in my case too, uh, the the type of license was suggested by the SNF as well. Yeah, so same same for me, yes. And did you have any thoughts of your own? Did you want to push back and say, "Oh, actually, I'd rather have a different license," or were you happy to take that um, suggestion? Honestly, I didn't think. Too much about that uh, at the moment, I have to admit. Um, yeah, um, it, go for it, artists. Yeah, honestly, I I I I remember that at the time I I had a quick look and I um, I saw. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm not a librarian. I I don't know. I mean, what are the implications of which uh, license? I I was just okay. I just go with with what suggested and what seems to be the normal case suggested by the founder and I, I mean I already spent a lot of time and energy on this I just go on yeah I think Niels has dropped in a an article from the OA books toolkit about licenses so if anyone wants to follow that up uh that's the that's the link there for that um Isabel asks uh the book processing charge model seems to work for you because you've been given funding um, have you thought about whether this model is sustainable and scalable for funders and for libraries? Uh, would you consider using diamond presses instead or diamond models? Um, I don't know if anyone's thought about this. Yenika, I know you said you were publishing with uh, Langside yeah. Press next. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I will <clears throat> try and find uh, an open access uh, uh, publisher um, and uh, avoid having to uh, uh, to put money uh, to it. Um, if I would have uh, a co-author, um, but this would mostly be for articles, um, that, who says, I really want to publish with X, Y, and Z uh, um, for, for this next project that I have, I have calculated some uh, open access uh, uh, money for the, for, the, for the funding, but of course I'd rather use it uh, uh, somewhere else. And I would rather see the funding agencies that we've talked about here, use their money uh, for for other things than um, uh, um, publishers uh, uh, who, who eat up uh, that money. Does anybody else have any thoughts about book processing charges? Is that 
a model that you, you sort of thought much about or that you would use again or avoid again or it's a necessary evil maybe I don't know in my case I mean I probably more of a necessary evil uh, given my knowledge in the sense that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not I mean in the um, among the publisher that are you know well established uh, in, in my field I, I wouldn't know of uh, any any such publisher that would that, that would pu publish without fee. Maybe I, I I'm just I'm just ignorant uh, on that matter. But uh, I, like that on the top of my head, I mean I I, I couldn't think really about uh, any any such scheme. Um, so for now, I mean if you if you if you want to publish, you know, in, in, in kind of well established presses, I think it's kind of a necessary evil at least in, 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 given my knowledge of, of the publishing landscape in philosophy Actually, Maybe I had a, I had a, yeah I had a look before I, I went to Cambridge uh, that, that's true that in philosophy like we we, we don't have a tradition um, of such publishers but there, there are some exceptions like Maybe Milud, you, you don't know, but David Velleman has published several books with with open book publishers. Actually, who is who is a well well known philosopher. So, uh, I but but he's already established in the field, so he he can he can uh, go. That's go. that's also the problem. I was I was thinking about well established presses, yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Evie, have you got any thoughts about this topic? I know you mentioned that one of your co-authors would have struggled to find the funding, but that that ended up not being a problem because FWF provided the funding for the book. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, we would have published it not open access. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was just to to increase readership. It was not a mandate, so it was. And for me, it was quite easy to to get funding. For this one, also because of the relation of this publication with a former project, so it was fine. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And just to continue on the funding theme, there's a question from Sarah. So she says many funders require OA books to be planned at the beginning of a project proposal and factored into the research grant that people apply for. But these funders seem to have been more flexible and being arranged later. Um, so. Sarah, I think maybe based in the UK, wonders if that's because these funders are based in Europe and maybe the, the processes are different. Um, was it an issue for anyone about publication being an output of a research project or in anything related to the timing of when the funding was applied for? Was that a problem for anybody? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, it wasn't a problem, but uh, there were strict requirements. Uh, it had to be a publication related to and worked on in an um, NWO funded project the project had to still be ongoing and um, the book had to be uh, already accepted uh, um, so that it doesn't take like forever to to publish so those were the requirements and i was actually thinking that this would be that, that this is a this was a sort of in between um, and that from a certain point onwards um, a project applications were supposed to have uh, planned indeed uh, whatever money is necessary in the budget for open access publishing um, but I was surprised to see that uh, uh, the scheme is still uh, is still there I think Artis and Milud you both said that you applied for funding not necessarily as part of a project but just for for the publication so it's probably not a factor for you yes indeed it was an independent project so if, even on their website you have to create a new new project and, and fill it in uh, independently of, of, of your other projects so it's whatever you do yeah and evie as well you said that it wasn't part of a project it was a choice that you made yeah okay but thank you i think yeah. i think that there are some restriction uh with regard to the snf so uh, um i i checked uh um uh, two days ago on, on the web page on the uh, OA book web page and I think basically I mean it has to have some relation with a with a SNF funded project I mean uh, the, the, the 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 grant I mean the, the the grant application for the OA publication so there are some constraints but they are they are quite flexible I think uh, yeah. yeah right thank you 
Um, and one thing I'm interested in, especially I suppose we talked a bit about sales of physical books. Are you kept informed about usage data of the OA book? Do you know how much it's been read or downloaded or where? And also, do, do the funders ask for that kind of information? Is that something they want to know about, you know, the money that they've spent to make it open access? So who's reading this open access version? I don't get the information automatically, but I needed to indicate um, the impact of my publications for a next uh, project proposal. Um, so I did actually write to them and ask, do you know how many uh, books have been sold, uh, sold and how many um, uh, times it's been downloaded from your site and other sites and they could give me uh, partial data uh, on that. Um, so it's 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 stored somewhere. Um, it's not that I automatically get updates like um, who sold another book. <laughs> uh, I, I can see this information on the on the open on the website where the book is um, where you can have access to the book. So the downloads, the number of the downloads. But my colleagues and also I, we also uploaded it to different. Um, websites or you know just as linkedin or research gate so you don't you cannot count every download and we asked also the the publishing house if you can do it if we are able to do that and uh, they said yes and for the physical copies i receive once a, a year letter with the number with the sold copies but they don't include the the usage of the OA version in that update. That's just about sales. Yes, but the 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 uh, open access version I can see always every day. I can I could see it on the right. Um, so you yeah. can just choose to yeah yes. to check. Um and Malud Artis, did you have any uh, access to that information? So in in my case, uh, oh sorry, uh, in my case, uh, the information of, about uh, access is is available on, on the website of on the website of, of the book, uh, Cambridge. Um, uh, so everyone can see it, like the number of, of download downloads you have for for the book, number of access to summary, uh, something, and and um, and I guess that's it. Book summary, page views, and. Uh, and book uh, like overall uh, downloads and you can also see the data for every month since since the publication went up um uh, uh, a funding agency didn't ask for this uh data uh at least in my case i i, I never had to uh, show that uh sorry what what was the last question uh I forget. that that was it so did you do it, you yeah. know about this information and do the funders ever ask about it yeah no uh, and yeah, and then the other, uh, then you can log into the the all sorts of and see see how sales are going, but that's that's a different story. Yeah. So in my case, uh, I don't think this uh, this information is easily available for from uh, the web page. So I think I would need to ask the the publisher for this kind of information. The only kind of. Uh, Information I have about downloads um, is through um, uh, uh, philosophy search engine uh, that um, uh, counts the, the, the downloads, but I, I have no metrics um, directly from the publisher. I would have to, to ask for that, uh, which I didn't really do because I was never required to, <laughs> like like archers. I mean, uh, that that's, was not at all a requirement for even for future grants or something like that. What well, one interesting thing that I, I see in the in the uh, sales uh, uh, page uh, and which always um, uh, raises some questions is like there is also uh, there are some sales for digital versions of the book. So I, I I just don't understand like who are these people who buy the digital version of the book uh, while it can be downloaded for free. Uh, like th there are some it's like not not huge but <laughs> there are some people who buy it. So I I just don't understand. But that's. Yeah. It might partly be discoverability. People might come across a, a version that they have to pay for and not come across the open access version, potentially. Right. That, that could be it. Yeah. Um, and also, and, oh, yeah, that, sorry. Uh, um, when I visit the, the Oxford University Press site for my book, it's, it's like somewhere hidden in a corner that this is open access. 
which I mean I can understand from from their perspective, but that might also explain the the as you say recoverability of uh, uh, the fact that this is uh, openly accessible. Yeah, some publishers make that more obvious than others, maybe. Um, but yeah, I think that's definitely a potential factor as well. Um, so a question from Isabel, and I'm sort of curious about this as well to maybe kind of broaden it out a bit. So Isabel asks, um, did you need or receive any help from your local librarians? And is there anything they could have helped more with? And I'm curious as well to know about that from the funder side as well, because a few of you, you know, you sort of mentioned things like some of the processes were quite difficult to grapple with. There were unexpected delays. Sometimes it was hard to find out what funding was available, what support was available. So I'm interested to know both what Isabel asks about librarians. Did you receive help from, from those librarians? And also, was there any other support or information that you got from anywhere else? Or did you just sort of have to figure this out yourselves kind of thing? I mean, Milud, it sounds like Arters was your your guide to the, to this strange new world of OA publishing. Arters was was my librarian at the time. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I, we we didn't. If I mean, the, the librarian at the university were not really uh, involved. Uh, I think in providing us with information about that. Uh, I think it, it it could be a way actually to to make uh, to give the funding scheme more visibility. Uh, if they would, you know, communicate directly through librarians with a uh, researcher at the department, that that might be just the just the way actually to give this kind of scheme more visibility. And, and I think, yeah, that could be, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I try to remember in my case too. I I, I had no contacts whatsoever with, with librarians at University of Geneva when when I was postdoc there uh, and when I applied to. However, now I remember that when I was a year later in Zurich and when I when I when I when I met Milud in Zurich, I I, uh, I did have some contact with librarians, but it was more about about articles actually. It was it was since since the funding for open access uh, articles went through uh, library of of, of uh, University of Zurich and not directly from from Swiss National Science Foundation, it, it we had to Submit our requests to to librarians at, at university. So for for articles, it, it went through librarians, and, and communication was much more uh, 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 frequent. Um, and Yannicka or Evie, I I asked the IR library at the University of uh, Vienna first for how how if they can help me with uh, with the funding for a book because uh, there are a lot of helpful people and uh, they always have a lot of ideas. And then they told me that it's possible for a lot of journals, but not for books. And I don't know if they told me, I think so, or if then um, somebody else told me that there's this uh, aging, uh, this funding agency. And then I asked them and then there were also uh, very helpful people there and they uh, I could always call them and ask and uh, it's also described very nicely online how you can get the funding. So it's, uh, for me, it was very accessible. Thank you. I don't remember um, being in contact with the library uh, or librarians, um, but we have a special grant officer at uh, LUCL uh, who made me aware of the, uh, the possibility of applying for the funding um, for uh, the open access book. Okay, thank you. Um, so we are running out of time, but there's one question from Elio that maybe we could all answer quickly, if you wouldn't mind. So he asks, uh, I think it's a he, apologies if that's not correct. Um, have you put your books also on the repositories of your universities? I can't remember, I would have to search, sorry. <laughs> I think I didn't. Uh, probably, maybe I should do it. Uh, but I, I basically assume as, as it is freely available uh, from the publisher website and from search engine uh, um, specialized within our field should be should have, it should be <laughs> uh, easily accessible for for everybody. But maybe I should. Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't either. Um... I didn't put book on the, on the repository. Maybe? No, me neither, but I also didn't see the 
the need for it because we have a data bank with all, with all the publications and there put the open access links and they had to put it on the repository of the funding agency. So you have it also there. That was one of the prerequisites. So uh, not for the, not at the university, but yes, maybe I, I knew about it, but I didn't find, uh, find it helpful now at this moment or. Okay. Thank you. So I feel like we could actually keep going for ages. I've got a list of more questions that I was hoping to ask, but unfortunately we've we've hit the hour. Um, so thank you so much to our four speakers who've given up your time and shared your experiences with us. It's been extremely useful for me and I hope for, for everyone who was listening in as well. Um, and thanks to all of our audience who came and listened and give, given us your attention and your questions. Um, we will be sharing the recording um, probably next week, I think. Um, via the open access books network channels and also potentially via the Palomira mailing list if I can persuade Ursula sure that that's what we should do as well um, and we'll email it to all of the, the register, registrants to the um, webinar as well so thank you very much and have a wonderful rest of your day thanks everybody thank you thanks a lot for organizing thank you bye bye bye, -bye. bye.